Hey, good morning, guys. I've been at SAP since uh, 9 o'clock this morning, 10 o'clock this morning. I had a bunch of buckets that I put in reserve. And I stacked them in the snowbank over here and I brought them out. So I have a lot of sap. I have over 100 gallons this time, which is a lot for me. Normally I'm doing, you know, 50 to 100. But anyway, I think the crap weather is behind us. Uh, it's 52 today or 55. Uh, you can see all our snow from the storm melted away and lots of ground is showing itself. It's supposed to rain the next two days. Uh, be in the 40s tomorrow and 60s on Wednesday. So, I am going to hook up our water catchment. Just so we can start having water. Because we're not going to have any snow anymore, hardly, to melt. We have to have water from somewhere. Uh, we just set the system up last late last summer when we got the bedroom done. Because it's the first spot that we kind of put a fascia on and could put a gutter on. Because up to this point, we've had our soffits all opened up. But one, because I just haven't made it a priority. But two, we've been adding on. You know, we added on the bedroom and we added on the bathroom. And we added on the front porch over the deck. And we're still contemplating putting the porch over the side. So I can't do soffits. So we set up this, sorry about the wind, nothing I can do about it. We set up this gutter here. I wanted to make it lower so if the snow slid off, it didn't take out the gutter. So it still collects water fine. It still goes up underneath the drip edge fine. So the fascia is protected. But this spout coming from the end of the gutter fell off. Because like I said, again, we didn't like really super secure stuff down because this is temporary uh, until we get a water tank in the ground and we get a permanent setup. But we are sick of going to the river and getting water. Um, it's a pain in the butt, but it's, you know, it's part of the game. So watch me hook this up, but I'll try to show you as best I can how our water system works. And hopefully we can start using this and collect a bunch of water the next couple days because it's supposed to rain for two days straight. guys so when you buy these brackets you screw them to the fascia then they loop down underneath and grab right here um probably have to bend these all up a little bit more because it got yanked around a little bit but once the snow has gone there really isn't anything to worry about anymore but all these got disconnected so we gotta put them up Under the lip like so. And then attach it right here. <clears throat> there we go. I find this end cap. Even though most it's slanted towards the spout. So we have this right here, this old cap. I never did set anything up permanent because, like I said, again, we're gonna be doing something new with this this year. So we have these uh, pool socks. These are pool filter socks. Uh, what they do is catch all the big debris. Just put one over here like this. And I put the spout in there like that, and we catch water. Everybody always says paint these things black so they don't get algae in them and stuff. That's great. Um, 
I would have done that if this was going to be long term. And we did have LG in this last year. I would hit it with about a cup of bleach uh, once every few weeks if we went away for, say we went down state for a week or a few days. Um, I would hit it right before we left and then we come back and it's crystal clear. So uh, bleach, chlorine, all, uh, you know, evaporates after some time. That's why you have to keep putting it in to pools and, uh, you know, to sanitize your water and kill algae and stuff. So this year, like uh, if you watch one of our videos, we talked about all the plans that we have for this summer. So I'm hoping to get to all that stuff. Uh, we also decided, we also discussed taking about half of those things off the list and just enjoying the summer a little bit more. So, uh, and showing you guys some more of the great outdoors and what we would normally be doing if it wasn't for uh, doing this off-grid project, off-grid cabin and off-grid lifestyle. So, uh, there's a lot of loose ends around here though, so we do need to, uh, wrap some stuff up before we go have fun but uh long term i want this gutter and possibly gutters off of the rest of the cabin to feed into a couple of these either tied together or purchase you know a thousand or fifteen hundred gallon water tank and bury it we have a few projects that we have to that would be nice to have a mini excavator this works great guys actually like if you're not trying to make a more permanent setup if you're not trying to make a more permanent setup and like full-time forever system this works great i mean wrap it in some black plastic or paint it black and surround it with something and some insulation and you could use this probably seven or eight months out of the year in the northern part of the country and then I mean, either way, you want to hit stuff with a little bit of bleach once in a while to kill bacteria, regardless if the algae's in it or not. So, you don't want to drink it right after you shock it, but, uh, you know, this worked great. And most of this, uh, this is dishwater, shower water. If we're going to use this for drinking, we run it into our Berkey, our gravity fed Berkey system, uh, whatever they're called, the Berkey canisters. So, and we've been doing that for three or four years and neither one of us have died yet. So I think we're doing something right. I'll show you how the uh, hose runs over to the front of the cabin or to the, the door. And I'll show you the pump. I don't have the pumps out yet. But we want to at least get some water in here, melt this ice chunk that's in here, and, uh, you know, get this rolling again. I see this now, and a couple people on our videos with the maple syrup mentioned that I was using Home Depot buckets that weren't food grade. Well, uh, they don't say food grade on them, but they do have the symbols on them that show you the material it's made out of. And this is a food grade uh, IBC tote. And here's the symbol. I just saw it on here too. Uh, it's 2PEHD. There's a couple of different number twos, but this tells you what the container's made out of. And that two with the PEHD, as far as from the research I did, um, makes it food grade. It's just made out of a harder type plastic that won't leach into your food. Uh, it mentioned that this is the type of plastic they also use for milk jugs, stuff like that. Uh, you know, milk jugs are obviously temporary but recyclable, and obviously the, the kind of plastic that's good for food grade stuff. So, your food, your buckets don't have to say food grade on them. I don't know if that's just like, I don't know if saying food grade on there is just like a salesy thing, but. It showed most of the numbers that have the triangle around it, one recyclable, but it made the plastic uh, food grade. So it might not say food grade on your bucket, but unless your bucket's made out of something or had something in it prior that's toxic or chemical or whatnot. So, so let me know if I'm wrong, but the food grade buckets have all the same symbols on them as the ones that don't say food grade. So... No worries.
but we're supposed to get a ton of rain in the next two days so i'll show you in a couple days how much rain we got we have a nice chunk in there with some melted water or melted ice that's turned back to water already right now we have about 50 gallons in here 50 i'm assuming this is liters yeah gallons liters 1000 liters 275 gallons so there's about 60 gallons in here right now of water and ice so here is our ball valve i just used the standard one that comes on there it froze when it was open so i can't really turn it yet there's probably still some ice in here then we run it to the hose the hose runs over here under the cabin, around to right here. And I leave this hung up here because otherwise gravity would dump it out on the ground. Once we get it set back up for the summer, uh, we have a little 110 volt plug pump right here that hooks to that and we have a shorter hose off of that And we just plug it into the cabin we can fill up our uh, Dishwater tank thing real quick. We can fill up the Berkey both pitchers real quick uh, But long time long term goal We'll set that up as soon as we can so we can have water but long term is to run it to a little pump house or well house in the ground and then i won't have to do this anymore this is just something that we were using for a couple months last fall to help aid us with having water and make it like make life easier up here so so cool solar's doing good guys solar fills up in half a day when we have sun so that's cool i wanted to come over here and charge up the one of the power stations. Uh, we had made a video a few weeks ago or a month ago about the Zendor Super Base 2000 Pro. Uh, that's been a pretty cool unit for us guys. I've been using it to do SAP. So if you guys want to see that, check that out. It's a pretty cool unit. I like it a lot. And it's a big unit and charges quickly. So but anyway. Got some wood here I gotta split still. Sap's boiling hard again. Gotta get that foam off of there and that's what I'm doing for the whole day. Boiling sap again. Gonna rain the next two days. We'll work inside the cabin on a rainy day. And I just need to be outside. Makes me feel good, makes me feel happy. And I love doing this, so. So hang out with me for a little bit, guys. But that's how our rain system, rain catchment works. Pretty simple, eh? You don't have to complicate it. Uh, but we're, we're gonna make it a little bit better this summer. Hang out with us this summer. We're gonna get a lot of cool projects done, so. And thanks for putting up with me with these uh, low key sap videos you know syrup videos and hanging out i mean it's just kind of transitioning seeing how springtime goes i'm gonna be happy when the snow's gone and we can drive up here it's kind of a pain to park a mile away and drag everything in on this sled and trailer so all right 